This little thing is a wireless doorbell that I bought off of Amazon for 17 pounds. But with some blood, sweat, tears, 10p in ethernet cable and a six pound ESP32 board, it's now a Zigbee doorbell. This is how I made it, including the code side of things, which by the way is now live at least on my GitHub as a fork of the ESP32 Arduino core. I'll submit a pull request to make this all sort of public and as part of the main core soon, but I'm happy to say that it's working well, so at least let me explain. First, the stock doorbell. It's actually pretty cool on its own. The outdoor button part is completely wireless and battery free. The action of pressing the button wipes a magnet past a coil of wire, which induces just enough power to let the transistor on board pulse, pulse a bunch of data at 433 MHz, which the doorbell speaker receives and plays the doorbell sound. Since this outdoor bit doesn't need any wiring or battery replacements, it should be pretty reliable even if it isn't 100% sealed. Something that I might consider fixing with some silicone or RTV, but still. The speaker is also a pass-through plug, kind of like a few Paraline Ethernet adapters actually, and inside of it is just a small PCB with the RF chip, the main microcontroller, and what's either a speaker driver or an op amp. It has a full bridge rectifier that converts the 240 volts AC into 330 volts DC, and then a little LDO power supply takes that 330 volts and drops it to a stable 4.77 volts. Why it isn't 5 or 3.3 volts exactly, I don't know. The speaker actually has two buttons on board, one for changing which sound it plays and one for volume. And there's an LED on board that flashes when it's playing a sound. Importantly for me, this pin here goes high when there is a sound playing. The pin above it is the one for the LED that you know it's connected to, so that pulses on and off, but the one below it is just a constant 4.65 volts, so that's what we use to trigger the Zigbee board. I, I should explain why I want this to be a Zigbee device though. Basically, I want a regular doorbell that just rings when someone's at the door, but I'd also like to get a push notification to my phone, no matter where I am, to know that at least someone is at the door. It isn't as good as a video doorbell where I can see them and talk to them, but where I live that'd be a little uncomfortable for my neighbours, so this is a pretty decent compromise, at least for me. So, how to make this dumbbell a smart bell? Well, this little ESP32C6 from Seed Studio, obviously. Its diminutive size makes it perfect for stuffing into a small space like this. I just soldered some ethernet wires to 4.77 volts, ground that switched pin, and to the top switch too. That switch is used to put the board back into pairing mode if needed. It'd be a massive pain to have to open this thing up just to reconnect it to a Zigbee network, so co-opting one of the externally accessible buttons seemed like the best choice. I've used a couple of resistors, especially to limit the voltage from that switched pin. The ESP32 runs at 3.3 volts, so I've picked 33k and 56k resistors to essentially drop that 4.65 volts to around 3 volts for the input pin. I've also added an inline resistor, sort of current limiting resistor, uh, from the button to the board just in case as well. The board itself then just tucks down in the bottom of the case and that's pretty much it for the hardware. So let's take a look at the software. So on the software side of things, this is all very similar to the last video that I did, more generally about DIY Zigbee devices and making a, a DIY Zigbee light sensor. So if you want to know more about what it is I'm talking about here, maybe go check that video out first. But this is all pretty similar. Now one actual big change is that I had to put the config or the default config in the header file because uh, as I mentioned in the last video I tried to put the light sensor, the illuminance sensor default config where all of the rest of the default configs are in the Espressive uh, Zigbee SDK. 
I submitted a pull request for that, but Espresso said, nah, keep that in your repo for now, maintain it yourself for, for now. So I've put it in the header file. We've also had to create a uh, config cluster for struct for uh, this, which basically just tells you what sort of items this cluster can have. And in this case, the state config for on and off is pretty much all you need. The actual functions here are very simple. There's the standard constructor and then a set state function and a report function. And that's pretty much it for the header. The main code, there is one single, like the most important change in this bit of code is actually just one single hex value of ID. In fact, it's really only this word, client versus server. Everything else here is a server role as in an input cluster. This means that uh, if it's a server role device, basically, it is a bi-directional communication uh, so that the server can tell the board to change its state or do something with, you know, or, or identify the board, you know, it can send data from the server to the board. If it's in client role, that means that it is a one-way sort of relationship where the board can tell the server, hey, I've changed my state, but the server can't then tell the board, hey, you should change your state. It is a one-way direction sort of conversation. Uh, and that means that this on-off cluster is an output cluster and shows up as a sensor, not as a switch. If you were to change this to server role, it would show up as a switch in Home Assistant. Uh, so you can change this state yourself remotely. We just want to be able to know that this has been activated. We don't need to try and change anything. So this is set as a client role, as an output cluster. That's also changed here in the set attribute value. Also, if you're interested, this also has to be set as a simple sensor device. Uh, I did try on off output device and button and whatnot. It just didn't work. So simple sensor device is all we've got. This is also really pretty simple code. We just have the set state function and the report function, which just actually sends it over the Zigbee network. That's pretty much it. As for the actual Arduino code, the stuff that gets put on the board itself, this is all very similar to the last sort of setup, basically, where we initialize our device, we initialize uh, the, or the set of manufacturer model, add the endpoints, initialize Zigbee. And then the main thing we're doing here is just checking if that sensor pin, the, the, sort of the button or whatever, is high. And if it is, we set it to high and we send that you know, report off over the Zigbee network. And in this case, we also set the LED high as a bit of a diagnostic. That's actually still in you know, the firmware that's in the board, despite the board being very thoroughly enclosed. But who cares? Uh, and then obviously, if it's then turned off again, then we report that too. And of course, check that button to make sure that uh, it's not being asked to be reset or factory reset and put back in pairing mode. And that's kind of it for this code. It's really pretty simple. But there is another version of this code that I actually wrote first and then modified back to make the sensor version. And that is the on off device. So this has the same config, in fact, it's the exact same config, a renamed but otherwise same configuration cluster uh, struct. And the main difference you might see here is that there's a bunch more stuff here. We have an on state change handler or callback. We still have the set state and report, but we also have get state and the Zigbee attribute set function as well. If we look at the main code here, we can see that this is set as a server role. So this is a two way communication. So, you know, something like Home Assistant can tell the board to change its state. And that's actually what this set attribute function is for. This basically listens out on the Zigbee network. And if that on off cluster ID is called, and if it is telling us to turn uh, change the state, then we change the state and we run that callback function. If I go down to that, you can see that here. We'll, we'll see this more in the Arduino code in a second, but basically it just, if the if this state change function is called, then we call the state handler with the new current state. And again, if we set the state or change the state, uh, the only difference is that it's the Zigbee code that's handling the state rather than the board itself, if that makes sense. Um, but again, server role, and we just report it as usual. 
As for the Arduino code, like I said, this is where it's mainly different. We have a function that does something when the state is changed. So in this case, we're just changing the LEDs state, no problem. But if you wanted to use this to control, say, uh, a relay or something, to turn something on when you press a button either on the device itself, which is what we still check for down here, we check if that sensor pin or the button pin is, is high, and if so, we change the state. And that means that this function gets called as well. Or you can obviously do it remotely through the network too. Because this is a two-way device, we can call this function either locally from pressing a button on the device, or we can do it remotely from like over the Zigbee network, which I think is really cool and a really useful option. So that's the software side. Now let's take a look at it in action. Pressing the button both triggers the bell to ring like usual, but I also get a push notification to my phone letting me know that someone is at the door. That's pretty sweet, right? I do appreciate that this is a little bit of a niche project, seeing as how most people would just want a video doorbell instead of just a little notification, but this works well enough for me, so I'm happy. And to be honest, I use projects to give me a reason to learn stuff. And in this case, I've learned a fair bit about how to make Zigbee devices. So in future, when I want to make something perhaps a little more complicated, I can. And that's a win for me. Like I said, if you want to check out the code side of things, check out my GitHub repo, it's linked in the description. And if you want to make your own stuff like this, then like I said, just pick up one of those ESP boards, the 30, ESP32 C6 or an H2. Either of those work fine. The seed ones are great because they're utterly tiny, but there are a couple of C6 boards available. And like I said, you can check on the, the software side of things to work out how to program these things because it's not super simple, but it's also not completely unintelligible because, well, I've managed to figure it out and I'm not exactly the smartest person in the world, so there you go. If you want to see more videos like this one, I probably will keep making Zigbee stuff and probably will keep making videos about it, so feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Let me know what you would like to make, either like to see me make or like to make yourself uh, out of Zigbee devices or make Zigbee stuff. Let me know in the comments and what you think of this project compared to a regular smart doorbell. Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.